Okay, wake up, wake up, wake up. No, we're not talking about snoring. We're talking about Z's, as in Z scores. So, our objective is as follows. We're going to have a quick rerun. Well, first of all, we're going to find and interpret the Z score of individuals with the with this distribution of data and then we're going to go into um, rerun and, see, and describe the effects of adding, subtracting, multiplying, dividing a constant to a given data of distribution. So, let's go to our Z's. Okay, like I said, Wake up, wake up, wake up, people, because we're talking about Z-scores, and Z-scores are a special type of density curve. So here, this looks like what the dens this specific density curve is the bell curve that you guys know well too much from other classes. We're just hearing about a bell curve. Okay, so what is a Z-score? As you can see right here, it tells us how many standard deviations away from the mean away from the mean we are, okay? So that is the whole premise. How many standard deviations away from the mean? And another way what we're doing right here is we are standardizing the data. And see, that's the key thing. What standardizing the data means is that as we look at another name of this, we're looking at the idea of a standard score. What standardizing the data means, as I was about to say, is have you ever thought about when you see your ACT scores and then you take your SATs and how I want to say the scores are different. I don't, I always forget this. You should know what the, what the numbers are. But ACT scores are represent, I think the highest is 36. And I believe SAT is the highest is 2,600. If I'm wrong, you know, don't judge. Okay, but the thing is, is how do you equate, how do you compare something that's a four-digit number to a two-digit number and then establish it in a percentile to figure out where you're ranked? Well, we use a Z-score, which is a standard score, to standardize the data. So, to basically make everything created equal. Here is the formula in which X is represented as the the piece of data that you have, and then minus the mean over the standard deviation. Okay, so let's jump into it. Go ahead and read this question. And as you're reading this, well, go ahead and pause. Okay, so as it says here, the distributions um, are quite symmetric. That is a key phrase that we can use. We have to have it to be symmetric, to be a z-score. Okay, um, they're talking about here how, well, my question is, how do you compare these years? As they mentioned here, there's a, there, the rules have changed. Um, there's exercise physiology in how batters play now. I don't know if that happened in 1910, just saying. But things are different, so how do we equate them? How do we compare the difference of years? We have to standardize the data. So as you can see here with William, um, his, William's average was 4.406 in 1941. Um, Brett's was 0 0.39 in 1980. Oh, and I forgot totally about Cobb. Sorry, Cobb. That's um, 0.42 in 1911. So... How do we standardize them? We put it into the Z-score. Okay. Now, as we put it into that Z-score, here's Cope. So we're going to take this with Cope. He was in the 1911. So in that particular decade, that is, was the mean and the standard deviation. So I use that mean and that standard deviation to come up with his z-score. You want your math? Here you go. Here you go. Okay, next, for William, this was 1941, so I'm going to have to look at the 19, um, 1940s. Here's the mean and here's the standard deviation. I take it and I plug it in, and there is the new z-score. 
Yeah, it is that simple for those of you who are thinking because I know what you're thinking. Okay, for William, William right here, as you can see, first of all, they're talking about, where'd he go, where'd he go? I think I misspoke, I have got, got him confused, so let me start over again, sorry, sorry, sorry. So for Cole, here is his, um, his average in 1911, we have to look at the 1911s, um, what the mean was in standard deviation. When we do the calculations, we get this as a z-score value. Okay, for Brett, here we see that his average was, um, he had a .39 um, batting average, but in the 1980s, which they don't have here, so we're going to have to use the 90s, here was the mean of .261 and the standard deviation of point, um, Point O, I missed an O. No, I didn't. Point O um, three one seven to get that Z score. And now here is William. William was in the nineteen forties. Sorry, I didn't do it in the right order. And here was the average of the players in the nineteen forties and standard deviation. I took it and plug it in. And here is his Z score. So the question asking first of all to standardize the the scores of Cobb, William, and Brett, Shaq, and they're asking which is the better hitter. Well, remember, these are Z-scores, and remember I said earlier that Z-scores represent how far away you are from the mean. Now, quite honestly, these numbers, we're going to find in the very future that they are all phenomenal. They are less than, they're in the top point five percent but the thing is is that William has a higher z-score so with him being a higher z-score he's barely but nevertheless better than these players okay so take the numbers plug it in and just recognize here as I draw it, a bell curve really quickly to show you what I'm talking about and I'll try see it's already wonky cool. so here's one of them Here's the third one, and here's the fourth one. And that didn't show up very well. Here's one, here's two, here's three. So if this is your mean right here, and this one is Brett's, and this one is Cobb's, and this is William, okay? Remember, that means he's so, he's they're all far above the mean, okay? But the one that's the farthest above the mean in terms of higher is the better. Okay, now let's go move on to our next question or problem. Okay, no more questions on that one. Sorry. But now we're about to transform data. And as I look at this question here, this is old school. So what happens here? We are looking at how, do we, how does your data transform as you look at your socks when we add or subtract the same number from each. And we remember it has to be the same number. Okay, so remember what happened. Everything shifts. By, by whatever that, 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 that um, everything shifts, shifts by an end, whether it's add or subtract, when you have the mean and the median. So all the centers shift, but the, and the standard deviation stays the same. And remember the standard deviation stays the same because your spread does not change. Everything just goes from here to here, or from here to here. No, sh no shifting. Um, because the standard deviation, the width of my fingers, they stayed equally wide. So my fingers are just as fat, regardless if I move them over here or if I move them over there. Okay, with the multiplication, remember, everything, cha everything changes by a factor of n, except here's something we've never talked about, the shape. So even if I get at, make everything bigger, the shape, meaning if it's left skewed, it's going to stay left skewed. If it's right skewed, it's going to stay right skewed. And if it's symmetric, it's going to be symmetric. It does not change. So that's something new. Okay, now, here, what about when we're transforming um, data here with a z-score? Okay, so this is new. Okay, the shape is going to stay the same. And because all it's doing is taking your data and standardizing it. It's like changing from inches. Nah, I can't go there because I don't know what an inch is in terms of... Change of, it's like changing from inches to centimeters. 
it's the same idea. Um, so, and change it from metrics to our standard measurements here. With that being said, the center, well, it's going to be the same thing. It's going to increase or decrease by N, okay? So the same idea, again, because all that's happening from a Z-score is we are converting it to make things equal. As I look here at the center, like I said, you add or subtract by N, okay? The center, the center is going to just shift, but there is a slight difference here, and it's very slight, okay? Whenever you have the center, which is the mean, which let's say your grade point average is, uh, let's say the grade point average in my class, the student's grade point average is 3.4. Well, when we change to the Z-score, the average becomes a zero. We're going to see why tomorrow it becomes, well, Monday, why it becomes that way. But it's because one thing about standard deviations and means, we're going to find that there's one, two, three standard deviations away from the mean. And that doesn't mean that it is not more. It just means the bigger it gets, the more amazing it is. The smaller it gets, the lot less amazing it is. Within three standard deviations of the mean, we're going to find out a little later, is 99.7. So anything that's out here or here is 1 minus the 99.7%. Why am I talking to you guys about this? And yes, I did go through it fast. To tell you that whatever that score was, that mean becomes zero once we standardize it. Because exactly how does a, looking at an SAT score, how does a 2500 convert to these numbers? It is our Z-score. Okay, now, and here, just like before, when we multiply or divide the data, everything is going to um, gonna be, in, gonna be increased or, or divisible, divided by a factor of n. But your mean stays the same. Why does your mean stay the same? Go into math mode. What is zero divided by who cares what? It's zero. So that's why your mean stays the same. But everything else is just going to get wide around it. Okay, so now I want to look at problem number 20. And as I look at problem number 20, please read that to yourself. So the question here is if every teacher is given a flat $1,000 raise, what is it going to do to the mean salary and the median salary? Well, we know based on the last chapter we talked about the idea of resistant and non-resistant. Okay, um, but I should I misspoke I misspoke because this is not outliers. So this is not outliers. So ignore that I said that. Oh, I think I need to redo this tape maybe later. I'm gonna go home. I'm gonna go see the football game. Good luck at Atlanta. Okay, but going back, I digress. Let's get back here. Okay, so every teacher received a um, $1,000 raise. What happens to the mean and what happens to the median? Well, both of them are going to increase by 1000 Well, we know that already. Um, and um, so that says in context that everyone is going to shift or increase by, not 100 bucks. they're jipping me, by $1,000. And I want to show you what the book, how the book phrases that. Okay, so what they're saying right here is that, yes, the mean salary, which will increase by 1,000 because by adding a constant to each value in the distribution, it increases the measure of the location by the same amount. Okay, so I just wanted to read that to you because I do like the idea they're saying, as they go back to the math mode, by adding a constant to each value. So everybody gets that $1,000 salary. Thank you, district. Okay, now let's go ahead and read this last one. Okay, so flat raise of 1,000, what is it going to do to the extreme values? The extreme values and the quartiles, I can't forget about that. Remember, extreme values are another way of saying max and min. 
and the quartiles will increase by a thousand. But, just like before, the standard deviation or any measure of spread is going to stay the same because adding the same value does not increase the spread. And I'm sure if I were to pull out the book and said, if you um, increase or multiply everything um, by, the, the, by the same constant, okay, your extreme values are going to um, be increased by a factor of whatever. But in this case, in terms of the standard deviation, The standard deviation is going to stay the same. Okay, so here, um, peace out. Have another one. Have a good one, rather. Okay, it's like I've been here over 12 hours, so I'm, I'm really screwing up. I'll be taping this one over again. Not today. See you guys at the football game. Good luck at a wonder. Good luck at a wonder. Good luck. It's all about those Z's.